Hey, what's up everyone? Doing some more tip videos. Over the last couple months, I've had a lot of people ask me about my spinning rod setup, okay? And I know I'm, I'm down here and I'm always out here frog fishing and throwing big, throwing big baits and throwing braid and all this stuff. And, but, but I, I gotta admit, over the past couple years, I've kinda finally adopted in to the whole light line spinning rod concept at times. I've had some success doing it and I actually kind of like it. I'm going to admit it, okay? I'm going to admit it. There's times where it's actually pretty fun and, and, it, and it does help me. Now, the difference is though, is sometimes we've had to adjust some things down here. The reason I bring that up is, is, you know, this was all started on very open water kind of techniques, very you just didn't have a lot of variances that that mattered right i mean so you could go really light line you were really trying to you know trick the fish the difference is is though that we don't have a lot of that open water where i live and what we've kind of figured out is yeah the open water is great but we also have a lot of trees we have a lot of stumps we have a lot of brush we have things just around we, we have grass down here boat docks there's a lot of different applications you can use a drop shot so and that's what we're going to talk about it's kind of drop shot fishing not necessarily always on a spinning rod we do do it sometimes on a bait casting rod yes we still kind of go very light i wouldn't say it's like the most extreme light but we do we do go very light but we kind of just beef up some things just a couple little things to, to help us catch and land some of these fish getting them bites pretty easy because a lot of times where we're putting a drop shot they haven't seen it so um we usually can get them to bite the hard part is sometimes getting them in so we'll kind of go over that i'll kind of show you how we rig it up the little things we do different show you some fish catches the hook set like we're going to get into the hook set and and how we hook them and i think that's the biggest key i think once you hook them like you got them we're really not too worried once we hook them if we're going to lose them it's just one of those things that, and i think that's a that's the biggest key but that's what we're going to jump into so let, let's dive on in man let's let's get after it all right let's get some of this drop shot stuff out all right got my hooks got my weights all right then i got my other other worms man like I, I can basically get by with just about these two for drop shotting and, and and basically i'm good to go so got everything set up and i'll kind of tell you how i rig it all up and, and what i usually like to do i usually carry a whole bunch of line with me right all right so if y'all don't have one of these man i suggest y'all get them this is what i keep this in my boat it never comes out of my boat and what it really is is it basically has every single thing I need in here so let's see 25 pound line 20 pound line 22 10 12 I believe 16 some braid uh, 8 pound so, so basically, there's some uh, 12 pound, I bet. Yep, 12. Oh, that's 30. 12. Okay. So that's kind of what I'll do. Like, I literally can almost go anywhere with this and get away with this. So, listen, you're going to get a lot of different ways on how to do knots and stuff. My, my opinion is this, man. Get you a knot that you really like, that you think is easy to tie, um, that makes sense to you. Uh, basically all these knots I think some are better yes I do agree uh, I honestly think if you tie one good it's just as good I, I think that's where you mess up is just the tying part of it so you might tie the best knot but you might not tie it like perfectly every time and and I hear a lot of that with like the polymer knot I never break the polymer knot if anything I'm gonna break the line 
but I just, I, I tell a polymer knot for everything. So I, I'm not gonna get into all the knots. I mean, I'm sure people are gonna all, you know, tell me about what knot's the best and everything. Man, find your knot that you really like to tie, that's easy, that, that understands. I kind of learned the FG knot. It's what I've kind of figured out. I understand it. I understand how to make it really, really strong. So that's kind of what I'm gonna tie. I'm not going to do, this isn't a video about knots, so I'm not going to sit there and show you the knot um, that I use. I'm just going to let you know what knot I use. If if you'd really, really like, I, I guess I could do a tutorial on how to do the FG knot. But for right now, this is more just about the drop shot. I'm just letting you know what I use. I usually use a uh, 12 pound plasma braid um, almost exclusively on all my spinning rod stuff. And then I've just got eight pound FC sniper. Okay, um, I, I pretty much can get away with everything with just 12 pound uh, braid and eight pound leader. I think it works for almost just about every single application. Let's look at the rig. Now there's a couple hooks I'll use and this might be different from a lot of people, but I've got this one. I'm either gonna go with two different kinds of hooks, right? I've got just the owner, two aught, offset worm wide gap hook or the owner drop shot offset hook the one on okay two deals either one of them is good we texas rig a lot of our drop shots down here and the reason we do that is like i said we're, we're fishing around a lot of cover so this is a little bit different than what i would say most people do most people can kind of get away without texas rigging their drop shots are used to fishing them a lot more open water but you know that's we're kind of going to different application here so I'm gonna kind of show you how we do it down here at, at times when when we have to right this is this is more or le less drop shotting around cover as opposed to open water go ahead and rig one up the way we do it we just do a regular polar more knot like that okay if you tie it right you can rig the hook up to where it's facing up you definitely want the hook so the, the weights down here I haven't put it in there yet but you definitely want this part of the hook facing up like that, not down. If it is down, so say it is like that, okay? Like I said, I'm, I'm turning mine over, but say it is like that, you can take the bottom end of the line before you put the weight on there and run it through the top of this, okay? Is that it will make it stand straight up. I don't have to do that because mine's already doing it. So, I like about a foot to a foot and a half, okay? Um, I, to me, I haven't really seen it make that much difference down here. I know probably up, up north, I've heard about different reasons why people do it a certain way. I, I usually just like to find a, a nice little medium in there and one to one and a half, it usually is about right. And there you go. That's it right there. Now, worms. I'd say most of the time I'm going to I'm going to fish a dream shot, right? And our dream shots down here, um, do we're we're really not going. Sometimes I'll go clear, right, or real natural. But it, I I really like the browns and the purples a lot more. Kind of just depends. But I'll kind of I'll kind of show you this purple one. We all. From down here we throw a lot of this one man that like that brown purple is legit i still do this a lot i will still just rig it through the nose at times when i'm not worried about it okay but for this application of fishing in a little bit heavier stuff we just texas rig it okay come through the that end and like i said we we like to rig it like that we like to have that flat side on top okay you just come back through and you can just barely just nose hook it and just like that we want that flat side on top it just it makes it makes a ton more sense to where you get a lot of good hook penetration with it flat if you went the other way it's a little bit more curved you're not going to get as a good of a hook penetration when you set the hook so that's why we always do the flat side on top and that's basically it we use a lot of the fat baby finesse i kind of hook this one just because of of how we've always done it. It's actually a little bit skinnier, but we do the same thing. And that's it. That's our just Texas rig drop shot 
Now, here's the kicker. That is our drop shot rig. This reel is a loose CI 200. My other reel that I really like to throw. I've got them both rigged on seven foot three spinning rods. They're actually different kinds of spinning rods. Okay, they're they're both medium heavy to heavy. Like I said, this is this is your. We're not drop shotting really really light stuff. We're fishing around a little bit more cover. And I'm not saying we're throwing it in big brush piles, but we are fishing around heavier cover. Either whether it be stumps. Um, there might be some limbs down there. There might be a log or two. There's something that we're not trying to get it through the thickest stuff, but there's a good chance when we're fighting it or when we're throwing it out there that we are, maybe your line does touch some stuff. So a lot of times we are going to have to, to get these fish around something. One of the last videos I did was, was on fork. Okay. And I was throwing a spinning rod up there around some bedding fish and sure enough like it goes around a tree in in a stump and i had to fight that thing around the stump forever and you can see with 12 or 8 pound test line i mean it was rubbing the whole time it was a four pounder you know and it did all that and i got up around the stump got my got my rod around and everything but those are the kind of things that we sometimes have to deal with um when we're going to fish it around cover down here when we since we don't have these open lakes so we do go a little bit heavier uh, it, that's why I use the two aught hook. Like I said, I, we just like the way it works. This one aught drop shot hook, if we have a little less cover and stuff, I'll use that one, right? It's a little bit thinner. It's pr it hooks them pretty good. Both in my opinion, we hook them really good guys. I mean, it's not, it's not something you lose a lot of fish on. So I, I gotta be honest with you. It's not something we're worried about. Once you kind of hook these smaller hooks in some of these fish's mouth, they usually don't come off to be honest with you if you if you get a good hook set in them I think getting a good hook set in them is is definitely key so and we'll kind of talk about that here in just a second what happens if I want to go bait caster on them we used to go a lot of bait casters and we still kind of do I know when you kind of get up north sometimes uh, when I was at Champlain when I was at some of these places I was actually catching a lot of my fish off beds on bait casters um, you've seen guys like Scott Martin. Some, some of us will, will throw bait casters on beds. Like they're pretty stupid. I'll be honest with you. So you can kind of get away with it. It lets you catch them faster. It lets you fight them for easier. Um, you can almost never break off on them. And just go straight 12 pound sunlight. And I just rig it up. No, you know, no leader, no nothing, all 12 pound. You can kind of go 10 as well. But I think, I think 12, if you're going to go ahead and use a bait caster, just go 12. Say one thing about even doing it down here. Um, you can bomb this thing on a bait caster. Okay. So like you can really throw it on out there. You can cover a whole bunch more water with a bait caster. Uh, I, I use the team lose pro TI. That's just kind of my, my real my all around reel for any time I use like 12 pound test or lighter is, is I usually throw the loose pro TI and really I just throw it like on a seven, seven foot three medium action rod. Like I said, th the deal is, is it, you're going to be able to fight them pretty easy on 12 pound test line. Like that's, that's not going that light. So you're going to be able to lean into them a little bit. And, and the second thing is, is we're not setting the hook on them. I mean, you kind of set the hook, but we're out there. And you'll see us kind of when we when we bow fish up. I'll, I'll have some some videos too, maybe of of some of our my other events where you can see me catching fish, you know, or setting the hook. I think that's that's key um, of how we kind of just reel into them, lean into them, real nice and easy. That's how we do it. Um, that way we're not worried about trying to break them off or or, or you know break our line or anything like that. Um, it's just it's just our way of doing it and i think once you figure that out you know and like i said this is for the guys that go heavy stuff all the time or trying to switch over like this is that's probably one of the hardest things is learning how to set the hook a little bit easier more of a reel into them more of a lean into them but yes this is we do throw drop shots on bait casters quite a bit down here all right that's that's it that's the simple setup for drop shot okay it's not that difficult it's pretty easy um it's pretty basic i i don't think you have to get all that detailed if you're worried about doing it if you're like trying to do something that's just that's pretty much going to work anywhere like this i literally can take the rig i just showed you and go up north and catch four and five pound smallmouth or stay down here in texas and 
fish around trees and things and catch seven pound largemouth, right? I, I can take this, go fish docks. I can do this pretty much anywhere. I can take that rig and get by. There might be some subtle changes here and there depending on where you're at. But for the most part, guys, it's, it's, it's gonna be fine. That's all you really need to have your all around good drop shot rig ready to go on any lake, pretty much in the country, guys. And the rest of the video, guys, man, I'm just gonna kind of show y'all, you can catch some big ones. Uh, I mean, we, we catch some really, really good size ones. Some fours, fives, sixes, sevens. I mean, this this drop shot around some a little bit of cover, I mean, catches some big fish, guys. Did you see the radar? Yep. It, it moved out there on that. Yes, on that it's break. out there on that deal. Yeah. Here's the other thing about this rig. Like, you can do a lot of different things. You, you can see me, I'm kind of I'm kind of flipping and stuff around reeds. And you like I said, you can throw this thing out there, you know, in some different kind of stuff. Like, you can kind of catch fish that no one else is really kind of fishing for. And like I said, I mean, there's there's always some grass around, there's always some trees around, there's always some things around. And, and if you really look back at some of these fish catches in this videos, you'll see us. For a second sometimes, especially when we first set the hook or or sometimes when we're catching them, like they'll actually get hung up around something just for a second. Like we'll, we're real patient with them. We'll eventually get them out of there. But I mean, like I said, it, it, is, uh, it is not just a numbers deal. I mean, you can catch some really big ones, some really, some really good ones, man. Uh, this, one, this one had a little, I don't know if a bird got off to it or what. Uh, Jason's always catching no weird ones, man, that get attacked by things. He kind of catches the stupid ones. I feel sorry for him sometimes. I let him catch some, some big ones. But anyways, man, that's it. Just wanted to share with y'all some little bit of uh, uh, some drop shots around. Some a little bit, not crazy thick cover, but just around cover. You know, where you have to beef it up just enough. Anyways, hope you enjoyed it. See y'all next time.